I see a pretty big problem. I mean, it's, it started off as, when I was little, I remember it was meth. And then they cracked down, they broke it down, and they, they got meth out, out of here for a while. And then pills like opiates, downers, et cetera, started becoming like a real big thing. And that got really strong around here. And a lot of people started doing those a lot. And, there's still kind of a lot, but not as much. It's it's more back to meth now. This, this is the big thing these days. I mean, I see a lot of kids I used to go to school with or people are around my general age, you know, and they're all either meth or heroin, I guess. Either doing it or selling it. <laughs> I don't see no life in that. Seeing people get sick from it and going through the withdrawals they do and just hearing about the stuff you do and then a lot of people, they, they inject, I don't know what they inject, if they're injecting the heroin or the meth or what, but I mean, you can walk around some places and just find needles all over the ground and that's, that's what really strikes me in the heart is that because, I mean, everyone, I ain't gonna say what community, but there's this one community not too far from here. And I mean, everybody knows that there's kids living, at least one or two kids every couple few houses and there's needles all over the streets. And everybody knows that kids play in those streets, so. Little kids. Little, itty bitty kids, you know what I mean? That, that, that are gonna go pick up a needle off the ground and don't know what it is. So that, you know, that saddens me a lot. And, that's, I see that as a problem. I mean, why, why, why can't they throw it in the garbage? Why, why can't they drop it in a needle box or something, you know? I mean, instead of dropping it in the street by a school zone or something, or there's always little kids. Well, so far, my daddy's a medicine man, and well, I'm just trying to learn that and, you know, maybe try to help some people through spiritual guidance try to help them that way or, you know, just kind of, you know, a lot of people do. I th The reason I think they do them is because they got pro personal problems or something. And Well, what I see is it's, it's pretty, it's hit the communities pretty hard. I mean, with the hep C and the HIV, um, I have a, a relative that is of uh, has the Hep C and is has have had severe medical issues due to it from over years, you know. And I guess we don't a person doesn't really realize how serious the Hep C is and how important it is to get tested and follow through with the procedures, the medical, the whole nine yards that they that they uh, suggest and. Um, you don't see it until later in life, the full effect, if you do not address that issue. I did have one lady came in Monday in my office and uh, she knew what I had gone through. So she asked how I started to get the help and what all it takes. So I told her, you know, and wished her luck and hopefully it'll work for her like it did for me. Well, it started I think with uh, not physical abuse but the abuse of the children, my grandchildren. So I did go to the county and uh, talked with them and then I went from there to the tribal court in White Earth and talked with them and started things. So uh, now I have five grandchildren in my house until the mother is in better shape to take care of her children. And uh, during this time, she gave birth to another infant, and one of my other daughters has that infant. He had spent five weeks in the hospital after his birth due to uh, 
testing positive for opiates when he was first born, so I don't like to see that. I see more babies like it in the hospital. And uh, we're trying to work with the ICW program on the reservation to help the mother and these children. So when she can, right now she is in treatment and when she comes out and can prove that she's a good stable mother again, we're hoping she'll get her children back. But we make do with what we do. Um, our kids help each other. They're together, they're not separated. They're with family members. Um, my other children help, and uh, hopefully we'll all come out of it in good shape. There's a lot of families like it, but we don't know, you know, how many kids go to this house or that house. A lot of the grandparents on the reservation are watching their own grandchildren. Um, I think we as a whole take care of our own rather than let them go somewhere. Yeah, I lived in the community and I see a lot of stuff with my own children. I have four children and um, lots of abuse going on in our family. Um, um, my kids got into heroin and my one daughter overdosed and um, her boyfriend revived her so she survived but um, I had another daughter I didn't I didn't know she was into heroin and one day she comes to me and says mom I need to get to treatment and me and my husband were just shocked because we never did hard drugs or we didn't really have knowledge of it and all of a sudden she comes to us and tells us she needs treatment um, so she went to treatment and she's been sober now for six months. Um, my oldest daughter, she ended up with a drug dealing boyfriend and they got busted two times in a week for selling heroin. And she is going to court right now and she's pretty sure she's gonna get prison out of the deal because she has three serious felonies. Those are her first charges ever, but they're pretty serious for her. And my son, he, um, he got in a bad car accident in 2004, and um, he got a serious brain injury out of that, and he don't make good decisions. And here in Natawash, he got involved with the um, I don't want to say a bad group of kids, but a group of kids that were doing things they shouldn't have. So he starts shooting up with them. Well, um, we got him to treatment. We had to, um, what do you call it, commit him. And he went to treatment up in, um, up in Duluth somewhere. And they, we get a call like five to six months ago saying, They told us he had um, liver failure. <laughs> and anyway, they told us he had liver failure and he had to get more tests done. <laughs> anyway, um, they tested him, found out he had hepatitis C. <laughs> Um, after they found out he had hepatitis C at the hospital, they just sort of like <laughs> didn't want to help him. But um, when he was transferred to a different treatment center where they had medical people, 
bottom. Yeah, I got into this field so I could try to help other people. Help other people out. Um, it's kind of hard, but I feel with my experience I can try to try to help people. Well, I think coming from a law enforcement perspective and even a recovering person um, is the drug use. Is the drug use that is so prevalent in the homes and whereas I stated earlier, the children, the parents, and even the grandparents that are all, you know, sitting in the same room using, you know, that, that's, to me, that was hard. And then the needles that are in the communities, we do needle pick up in the communities. And mainly also is our children that are the victims of, of the crimes due to the, to the lack of the parental parenting in the homes daily. That's, that was the hard part, the statistics that are out there. And then the high rate of STDs in our communities. Then were some of the hard things that, you know, after seeing and reading and, and learning about them was, was pretty hard to, to accept you know, coming as a native person, as a native man in this community, you know, this is happening right in my backyard. So how can I step up and do the best that I can for this community and our future generation of, of uh, leaders that are gonna be coming up here? You know, I'm kind of the new one, uh, me and my other coworker, Kelly. We're the new ones, we're the new kids on the block, I think. <laughs> we got um, started with um, the coalition probably about a year ago. They wanted some substance abuse workers just because it kind of hand in hand, I guess. So my cousin Mina, who is on the coalition and she's um, home health nurse, mm -hmm. she said, hey, you know, I started with substance abuse. Why don't you come join the group or, you know, come see and that's just kind of how it started. So what I've, been involved with with them we do um, needle pickup um, just last week we got a call from one of the housing staff and said um, the apartments in Manoman actually there's a lot of needles we've been finding needles in the playground you know the snow is melted what do we do so we called each other up and said hey let's go do an impromptu needle pickup so there we were, 28 degree weather, <laughs> sweatshirts, totally not planned, but we went and picked up needles for them and then gave um, the Sharps containers to housing to be able to, and we dropped some off at the complex, housing complex over there. Yes, I'm very worried about that. Um, I used to be a Head Start teacher, and I just, it broke my heart to, be up in these Manoma apartment buildings and we were looking on a Head Start playground for needles. Yes, that time we didn't find any, but we did find some on the grounds, but not in their caged or their fenced in area. It's sad, it's heartbreaking. It's very scary. It is, because I think, and I don't even think we have to be worried also just about the needles, but the spoons. Um, I grew up here and you know, playing outside, what do you do? You grab a spoon to dig. So, and how do you tell the kids, if you see a spoon, don't dig? Or, you know, you know, or bring one from inside, inside your house and bring it, you know. I just think with working with kids, I think for me that kind of helped with picking up needles that day. Like, oh my gosh, as a Head Start teacher for four years, we never had anybody come in and talk about um, needles. We never had someone come in and say, don't dig with spoons that you don't know. Mm -hmm. We've had someone come in and talk about fire. Mm -hmm. You know, there's Smokey the Bear, and there's nothing for injection use that 
is something that's for real here. And, you know, how do you talk to kids that are three and four year olds? But we are actually. Um, me being a Head Start teacher, I know the Head Start people, the director, and I called and said, hey, do you want our coalition to come in and, um, you know, talk to them, all these little kids about, you know, don't pick up needles. Like, this is what a needle looks like. Don't pick it up. Or even, don't play with a spoon outside if you, it wasn't yours. Go get it from inside your house and then dig with it. And we had grandkids to take care of, to worry about. I mean, they should be with their own parents, not with their grandparents. Um, these kids are going through a growing process and they're learning to uh, adapt and uh, they're getting back to their own ways where you have to ask them to shut up because they don't quit talking and jabbering and they're getting back to normal mm -hmm. you know and, and then now we're starting to let them two at a time go up and spend the weekend with their mother so um um, rather than the whole bunch of them up there so she can adjust to dealing with her own kids. We got four of the kids that do dancing at the powwows and now we try to take them to more and more powwows throughout the state. Um, so they're all doing well in school and um, participating in sports, school sports. So they're making do. And we're doing whatever we can to encourage them. It's, it's kind of a, a pattern that families and it's what I call breaking the cycle. A lot of the families don't break the cycle. Someone needs to step up and break that cycle. Peer pressure, you know, adult, it's not just the youth, it's the adults. And um, I know sometimes I was talking with a gentleman last night at a meeting, a community council meeting, and we were talking about how the, the, the kids, the parents, and I've, I, I've even heard where it'll be the grandparents they'll all be using together you know it's really really sad and that's what I mean there's there's far and fewer few role models out there that um, step up and say hey enough is enough somebody needs to break that cycle that vicious cycle when my parents would tell me you know, growing up, don't drink and drive, don't, you know, if don't do this and don't do this. And I was talking on the phone and saying, hey, we just did a needle pickup um, at an apartment complex. And of course, my daughter's like, what's that? And I was like, well, you know, there's needles. I said, even like grandma's diabetic needles that you should never touch. But it makes you think like, holy. This is something that I'm gonna to have to focus on and how am I gonna tell my eight-year-old, be careful for needles anywhere, walking or riding bike. And when I first started in substance abuse, it's only been about a year and a half. I you know, come into this program, kind of a change from what I used to do for four years as a case manager. And at first I'm like, I can't believe like, People are gonna give methadone or Suboxone or, I was like, I don't get this. Until I started, you know, hearing people talk about it. Yeah, I still have some reservations, but coming into this coalition and hearing them and like, yeah, this makes sense. You know, if you're gonna use, please use clean needles. Don't share, keep yourself safe, keep your family safe, keep your children safe. Um, yeah. I am uh, an enrolled member of the White Earth, and my mother 
is from Sistin, so I am I am uh, Dakota and Ojibwe, and um, I follow what we call Minobamadzi when our way of life. And so there's stories that were I was fortunate by some of the elders that I learned from Kendall and Lillian Rice to to address the needs of our youth and family through the cultural perspective. And how I do it is I always, I correlate our way of life, the traditions with the systems in place here already that would be AACD, mental health. I correlate them along either through, usually through stories or if we're in the lodge, the sweat lodge, I will tell them a story or maybe sing a song for them and help them to heal themselves. And there's a way in which that you do certain things to help to, to let some of these issues go, anger, mental health, whatever it is that they have. Um, recently this winter we hosted a basketball tournament, um, the White Earth Drug Coalition. So we just thought, basketball scored um, get tested at first no one wanted to get tested I think they were just like oh no I don't want to get tested um, but we had a lot of people saying hey I want your shirt hey can I have a shirt so he said kind of one person came by I'm like get tested and he was like okay so it kind of just started and we actually got maybe like 10 15 people now that I'm on the coalition, we try to bring them into our groups and offer each group if they can get tested and do HIV 101, Hep C 101, and then offer the testing. I was laughing, I have to go Monday night. Last night I was at ball games for my oldest granddaughter. Now tonight it's haircutting business for the two boys. And Maybe Thursday night it's back to another ball game, then Friday night it's up to take the boys to their mother, and Saturday I get to rest. My uh, other daughter and son are both into softball, so that's gonna start pretty soon, so that means go, go, go again. Monday before work, I had two loads of laundry done go to work for eight hours, come home and throw some kids in the van and head off to ball games and then come home and cook supper and then bathe and then fall in bed. Daily it's trying it sometimes, but it's worth it. As I said earlier, I do a lot for the tribe I work um, in other capacities also, and I sit on various boards. And one of the another boards that I sit on is the Juvenile Healing and Wellness. And then there's also a lacrosse over board, and then the circle back, these are programs. But the main one that comes to mind is the Juvenile Healing and Wellness. What I do there um, is we work with the youth that get um, into the state system, and they go into the state system and then they get charged out. And then if they hear about our program, they can recommend to the district court to participate in our juvenile healing and wellness. And when they, they do agree to that, the family and then the, the county, the judges, then what happens is that the crime gets stayed adjudication upon completion of our program. So what, there's another gentleman and I that work with it, Dave MacArthur is his name. We work with the youth very closely. We go into the schools, we go into the homes, we do random UAs. I, myself, I do, we do talking circles, we do cultural um, events, I do sweats with the, with the youth. Um, I help them out at whatever capacity it is that they need any services that are not being met in the family home dynamics or in the school dynamics. Dave MacArthur and I, we will go into the schools and we will advocate for the youth and the families to get these services met.
I think a treatment center that the whole family can go to. I mean, you have single parents, you have, you know, dads, single dads that's taking care of the kids that may need some help. You know, something that the whole family can come in and yet maybe a daycare that can take care of the kids while these families are getting um, help together. You know, you have a lot of boyfriend and girlfriends that are using, but we can't find any facility that will take a girlfriend and a boyfriend for the lack of a conflict. But if they can't get sober together, how is it gonna ever work? Anybody, especially in the Indian community, your family is your everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, seeing people that go into treatment, even if they have kids, they still, my kids, that's what they think of. But this disease has got them. But coming back to the community and not having anything and maybe having to go back to a family or to a home where they're still using. So instead, you, if you can find a place where you can fix the family or help the family together, I don't know how you're going to get it solved. If I, if I could do anything to change what happens here tomorrow, and it could be anything. Yeah. I don't know. Because there's not just one thing you got to do to get people off this stuff. You know, I mean, we can't just bring one, one Narcam or we, we can't just bring a needle exchange program in. I mean, all of it, Papa. Yeah, all of it. Well, like that. Needle exchange, that would be a, a good start. I mean, personally, I don't like the needles at all. I'd prefer that, that needle exchange stay away from here and stuff. But I mean, if it stops people from just leaving their needles in the streets where kids can get at them and stuff, then why not? A lot of people don't, they try to ignore it. I know I did. I blocked it out, I didn't believe it. Finally, when she came in and uh, closed my office door and sat down and told me, I had no choice. So I did what I had to do. Because I wouldn't subject my grandkids to it. That's the way I looked at it. And I'm glad I did because I think there might come a time when she's going to thank me. Right now, I kind of like to, to just do it quietly. I don't like being out in front. There's a lot of people that like to do that. So I guess in that capacity, I do it mainly with, with individuals or families and then like at the summits here, sometimes it just things just happen and you and you get out in front and you have to be out in front. So if I had my choice, I would just like to be the person a worker be, so to speak. <laughs> All what it really takes is communities to step up or one individual. That's all. If I had my way, it could be it would be one person in each community or two people or three people just to step up and say, hey, enough is enough. And actually, what we named the program is Gawin Gayabe. What that means is no more. So no more domestic abuse, no more drug dealing, no more bullying, no more suicides, no more sexual assaults. And so under that capacity there, it's like an umbrella statement, everything. Because something, when you address something like that, or even the hep C, it all interlocks together. It is not just one issue, it is several issues that need and have to be addressed in communities and in family homes. I just want to say, like, 
I lived in this community my whole life. My family's from here. This is a great place to be, and I think it, you know, it still is. There's every community, I think, has its problems, and I just think there needs to be more resources out here for this community so we can get better together.